Hello, this is Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and once again I have built yet another computer into this uh, case. I think there's been what, 50 uh, computers in this case so far. The um, computer that's in here now is based off of a Asus motherboard that a uh, viewer of mine sent me recently. This one is uh, different from the last one you saw. This isn't the uh, the uh, AMD board that you saw last time. This is a slot 1 Pentium 2 system. Specs of this, it has a 300 megahertz Pentium 2 and a 128 megabytes of RAM, still using an 80 gig hard drive, a DVD, a DVD ROM drive, floppy drive, and it's running a fresh copy of Windows 98 Second Edition. And so, uh, what we're going to do in this video is, um, this is an idea I had uh, recently. You see, when I set up a computer like this, an old computer, and have a fresh um, Windows 3.1, 95, 98 installed, I like to go ahead and install all of my software and all of my games all at once, just so everything will be ready to go when I need it. And so that's um, what we're going to do in this video. I'm going to uh, show you what all I inst uh, I'm going to install on this system, uh, software that would be appropriate for this kind of computer. I um, also forgot to mention this has a Sound Blaster uh, Vibra 16 in here, an ISA sound card. So this computer has perfect uh, MS-DOS compatibility. Well, almost perfect, I guess. <laughs> So uh, this computer will run pretty much anything from the early 90s to the early 2000s. And the video card I forgot to mention is a 3DFX Voodoo 3. Um, I have a Voodoo 3 in the Carolina Flyer right here. And I have another Voodoo 3 in this computer as well. I found um, it at a thrift store a few months ago, so that was a very, very nice find. Um, especially since I only paid two dollars for a Voodoo 3. That's unbelievable. So, um, I've also given this computer a name. I called this the Carolina Flyer Junior. I figured that's a pretty appropriate name, but anyway, enough rambling on. Let's get to installing some software. Now, depending on uh, how long this video winds up being, um, there may be a few uh, parts of this video that will be edited out just for uh, due to time constraints because um, I don't want you guys to have to sit here for potentially three hours and so anyway uh, I've also um, off-camera went on ahead and installed some OS related updates um, stuff that's really nothing that's interesting video worthy I did install uh, Internet Explorer 6.0 so let's uh, go ahead and start installing some stuff. And we're going to start with um, some stuff I have on my uh, virtual Windows 2000 domain. And as you can see here, I've got a lot of programs on here. And it's not organized very well at all. So, first thing I want to install is um, the plus pack for Windows 98. This is a must-have for any Windows 98 system, if you ask me. So we'll go ahead and uh, load this up. Th this was copied off my original installed disk that I got back in, I think, early part of the year 2000, probably. So um, I always have to install this on my uh, Windows 98 computers. It adds a lot of um, nice features. I'll go ahead and um, add the CD key. Okay, Plus 98 includes a uh, McAfee virus scan, and this is something we're not going to include with our install, so we're going to go with Custom. And I'm not going to install everything uh, the 98 Plus pack has to offer. Just, just, be, just to save space, and uh, and there's just stuff I never use. Like there are certain desktop themes I don't want. I don't want Kathy. I don't want Doonesbury. Don't want Fashion. I do not want Foxtrot. Do not want the Horror Channel. Do not want Jazz. And I don't want World Traveler. We'll take the disk cleanup add-ons. Those are nice to have. We'll take Golf 1998 Lite. 
uh, lose your marbles will take um, note of the maintenance wizard because I know I'll never use it and we definitely do not want the, the McAfee's virus scan it's just not necessary on a computer like this anymore. Okay, so now it's going to go ahead and, and start installing the files. Okay, there's our uh, much loved uh, drum solo. <laughs> not going to worry about the desktop theme right now. Alright, plus 98 is installed. We can check that off the list. Next thing I want is uh, Microsoft Works and Microsoft Office. Now, I never really use Microsoft Works on um, a computer like this, but you know what? No big deal. And on a computer like this, there are several options I could go for. I could go with, uh, like, uh, Works 4.5 or um, a newer version of Microsoft Works Suite from the early 2000s. But since this is a little bit lower powered, I'm going to go with uh, Works 4.5 from, I think, 96, 97. Okay, all looks good. I'll put in the product key. All right, let's uh, see what's next. I'll do a complete installation, and I do not want a shortcut on the desktop. That's highly unnecessary for this program. <laughs> all right, the setup is updating your system, so we're just about there. Alright, Works 4.5 setup was completed successfully, so we can check this one off the list. Okay, next up we need a copy of Microsoft Office on this computer, and again, um, there are several options we can choose from for a system like this, but considering its age, I think I'll go with um, good old Microsoft Office 97. And this is the professional version. This was the uh, also the first version of Office to include uh, Clippy, the Office Assistant. <laughs> Whether you like that or not, <laughs> that's up to you. Okay, I'll put in the product key. Alright, next step, it's searching for installed components. It'll put it in program files. That's the um, best place for this kind of stuff, if you ask me. And I want to do a custom setup. I'm going to select all just so I can have all the features, but there are a few programs I want to take out. I do not want Microsoft Access. You know, I've never used Microsoft Access in any setting before. I don't want Outlook. But everything else... Actually, I'll get rid of the shortcut bar. That gets in the way sometimes. But everything else we'll take. Now you may be wondering why I'm installing um, an office suite on a uh, system like this that's mainly going to be intended for gaming. Well, you know, uh, no matter how old a computer is, it's still capable of word processing. As a matter of fact, on the uh, corner of Packard Bill, um, right below this, uh, th this screen, I've been writing my novel. And um, I'm mainly doing that because it's a novel that mostly takes place in the 90s, and I figured it would be neat to write that on a computer from the 90s. So, there you go. I, I'm not sure if I'll be doing much uh, book work on um, this particular computer or not, but, you know, it's always nice to have uh, Office 97 or any version of Office on a computer like this. Just just makes it feel more complete. Alright, just about done with this. Alright, Office 97 is installed. So let's uh, go up here and uh, take stock of what we have. Hey, everything's looking good so far. Next thing to install is a little bit controversial. This is, yes indeed, Microsoft Bob. Which is uh, admittedly a bit old for a computer like this, but... You know what? I don't care. I'm one of those few people that kind of finds uh, Microsoft Bob somewhat charming. And I probably would have had a lot of fun using it um, back in the day if I had um, known it existed then. I was unaware of this program's existence until 2005. Uh, but I, as much as I like Microsoft Bob, we do not need it starting when Windows starts. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, since it's a Windows 3.1 era program, it's uh, brought up a uh, program group from the start menu. <laughs> Fun little quirk of Windows 9X. And I'm not going to restart just yet. So, there we go. Microsoft Bob, ready to go. Almost forgot about this one. We need a uh, desktop publishing uh, program on here. And so we're going to go with Microsoft Publisher 98. We'll complement the era of this system quite well. And I do still use these old uh, desktop publishing uh, programs from time to time. My favorite being Printmaster Gold, which we might be installing on this system. I just got to find the CD for it. We'll go with a typical installation for this. Okay, checking for necessary disk space. Alright, it's wanting to restart, but we're not going to do that right now, so there we go. we got some desktop publishing software installed on here, so if we need to make a greeting card or a calendar for uh, the year 1999 or something, well, we're ready to go, aren't we? Okay, finally, um, we're, we're going to install something that's not uh, Microsoft uh, created. This is Adobe Acrobat 4.05 for Windows. This um, is the full version of Acrobat, it's just not the reader. Is this, this is the full shebang. And the reason I'm going to install this mainly is so we can have the Adobe Distiller. Since this computer is not going to normally be hooked up to a printer, this way I can uh, print um, documents to a PDF file and copy the PDF file over to a modern computer and print it from there. And Acrobat, Acrobat 4.05, um, I believe, is the uh, most appropriate version for a system of this vintage. And I'm in the U.S. and Canada. Well, actually, just the U.S. If I was in U.S. and Canada, I would uh, be quite concerned. <laughs> I accept that. I'm going to do a custom. Okay. Yeah, everything looks good there. So I'll type in my uh, uh, personal information, Mr. Billy Core from the Nostalgia Mall, and I'll uh, add the serial number in. All right, looks like we're ready to install everything. Um, sometimes Adobe Acrobat does take a while to install, so we will. Uh, probably pause this and uh, catch it on the other side. Alright, we're all installed for Adobe Acrobat 4.05 and of course we will restart later. Um, I'm, yes, I know I'm lazy when it comes to restarting after installs, but that's just the way it has to be for me. Next thing I want to install is After Dark 4.0 because why not? I, I like having novelty screensavers every now and then. <laughs> All right, there's our uh, flying toasters there on the side. <laughs> so, uh, go with custom. Uh, yeah, everything looks good there. We'll just let it install everything except DirectX because I've already got DirectX um, 9.0C installed. I did that off camera. That's the uh, latest version of DirectX for Windows 98 Second Edition. Okay, I do not want to register um, for a product that is no longer supported. <laughs> and again, we do not want to restart. So, After Dark 4.0 is installed. And just to prove it, here we go. Oh yeah, this is the newer version that has uh, music. <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> so there we go, After Dark 4.0 is ready to go. Okay, next thing to install is actually a game. This is uh, Sega's Crazy Taxi. And this one's a bit of an oddball. It's it doesn't have an installer for some reason so what we're going to do is we're just going to copy the folder over to uh, program files folder and just do it that way and make my shortcuts manually it still works just the same 
Not sure how well Crazy Taxi is going to run on this uh, vintage of a system. We'll we'll find out later. <laughs> All right, and we're just about there. Okay, that's uh, Crazy Taxi kind of installed. Oh, I need to be careful with my cursor there. That could activate our flying toasters, and we don't need those right now. So next on our list is. Well, I don't know. <laughs> There's all the Microsoft stuff we already installed. Next, we'll uh, install Power DVD 5. This computer has a DVD ROM in it, so this will give us the ability to watch uh, DVDs on here. I doubt I'll need it oh, very often on this computer, but the option will be there if I do need it someday. And I believe this is from the year 2000. Okay, this this um, is recommended for a Pentium 2 350 or above, and this is a Pentium 2 300. So it's it doesn't quite meet the recommended requirements, but hopefully um, it's good enough. Okay, let me put the CD key in. All right, here we go. That looks good to me, and we're installing. Now, I have, um, growing up, uh, my first uh, computer with a DVD-ROM drive was actually my uh, gateway that I got back in 2001, running Windows ME. That computer, uh, I've talked about that computer before, that thing was a pile of junk. Uh, very high-end computer. Um, very fast, very powerful, but very unreliable. But it did have a DVD-ROM drive, and it was so neat being able to play DVDs on that computer. Okay, execute system diagnostics, sure thing. And we'll enable DMA mode of this uh, disk drive, so we'll be able to play DVDs on it. We'll restart later. And we'll head on to our next program. Okay, this is a big necessity. Uh, QuickTime version 5.05 .05. because a lot of the computer games that I play from the early to mid 90s on these systems require QuickTime and in fact sometimes it will uh, force you to install older versions of QuickTime which is a bit annoying <laughs> but we will uh, cross that bridge when we get there. And don't need to register it, obviously. I believe it's pretty much installed now. So we'll set up QuickTime. Um, this is on a local area network. And yeah, we can uh, let it open up Macintosh uh, files. Which is highly unlikely I'll be uh, opening those files on here. Okay, do not want to launch it right now. So there we go, QuickTime is ready to go. Okay, got another game to install. This is SimCity Classic, which is always a good game to play. This is um, the re-release of the original SimCity for Windows 95. And so we'll go ahead and um, install this on here. This is the version that came bundled with later Packard Bell systems. Do not want to register. <laughs> Love that sound. Brings back a lot of memories of old uh, Maxis games. So we'll head back down here. And we'll go ahead and install another game. This is... Uh, Full Tilt Pinball, for, also from Maxis. This is the game that brought us 3D Space Cadet Pinball. So we'll go ahead and let that install. Don't know why I clicked the back button there. <laughs> Do not want to register. Do not want to restart. But we are ready to go for Tilt Pinball. 
Next is a uh, very nice utility to have on um, these older systems. This is Tweak UI. This is a program from Microsoft that they had back in the day that you could download. And it just adds a few extra features to tweak the uh, user interface of Windows. So we'll go ahead and uh, install that. I have a version for 95, version for 98, and a version for 2000 actually. But there we go, Tweak UI is installed. Next we have the Windows Entertainment Pack. Uh, just because the installers for these packs are a little bit wonky on Windows 9X since they were designed for 3.1 in mind, I just like to uh, copy the files straight over to the hard drive like that and make the shortcuts later. So there we go, there's uh, the Entertainment Pack. Next is uh, another Maxis game that I used to like as a kid, Widget Workshop. Basically, uh, Maxis's uh, answer to the Incredible Machine. In a way, I guess. <laughs> it's not exactly the same, but it's similar. It's kind of in the same category. You get to connect all kinds of devices together and see what they do. So there we go, Widget Workshop is installed. And so uh, next, we can install a copy of 7-Zip. That's always good to have on any uh, era of computer, um, vintage and modern. Alternative mouse pointers, that's good to have. It gives you uh, like the black colored uh, mouse pointers. Damien Tools will uh, wait on that since that requires a restart. And we also have uh, .NET Frameworks for Windows 98. I'll install those later. And next, we have uh, this. This updates the Windows installer, which we will need for when we do install Damien Tools. And we'll restart later. And we'll install Microsoft IntelliPoint for our uh, IntelliMouse here. This is probably one of the most famous mice of all time. <laughs> this is IntelliPoint 4.12. I don't even know if I'm going to be keeping this computer right here or not, so it might be using a different mouse at some point, so... But it's still good to have. Uh, and it's going to force us to restart the computer, whether we like it or not, so that kind of uh, throws us off a bit. <laughs> okay, we've restarted. I really didn't see the necessity in that right now, but... Oh well, had to, we had to restart eventually, I guess. Okay, that's from uh, Power DVD telling us that it's um, enabled the DMA mode on the DVD drive, so that's good. And now here's IntelliPoint, ready to go. And I'm in the United States. I accept that. And this is just a standard IntelliMouse, so we'll go up here, select IntelliMouse. Don't want any shortcuts on the desktop. And here we go. Alright, we're already installed. That didn't take long at all. And we'll restart later. So let's go back to the server here. And what do we have? You know what, let's go ahead and install Damien Tools because we will need that later for when we need to mount ISOs to install. And this is the version for uh, 95 and 98. And of course it's going to install a virtual uh, SCSI uh, adapter in here for the virtual CD drive. And again, we'll restart later. We don't need to use it quite yet. Okay, now for a program called Kernel X, which allows you to install uh, programs that were um, designed for like 
Windows XP and later on Windows 98. It it doesn't work with a lot of stuff, but it works on a couple of things, so uh, I don't use it that often. And it needs Microsoft Lear for Unicode, and it's actually going to connect to the internet and download that, which is convenient. And I'm going to disable kernel X extensions just for now, and we'll reboot later. Next is a program that I really, really like having, and this is NetTime, and basically it's a internet time uh, server for um, Windows 9X, so when you turn your computer on and it's connected to a network, it will connect to the internet and get the uh, time from a uh, internet time service. Now, for, before I install that, I want to go into this program called TZ Edit, and this is because back in... 2007 uh, daylight savings time uh, start and finish was changed here in the US originally it started on the first Sunday of April and ended on the last Sunday of October but since 2007 it has started since the uh, for the second Sunday of March and ends on the uh, first Sunday of November instead making daylight savings time significantly longer. Don't know why they did that. I really don't like that, but oh well. So let's go ahead and uh, just uh, make sure it's set up there. Now we can go back and install NetTime. And this is a free program. And we'll go ahead and start it. And once the X goes away, that means it's synchronized. Or we can just tell it to update now. And there we go. It is now synced with a time server. Next is Paint Shop Pro. Always a good program to have it on old computer. This is version 7 from late 90s, early 2000s, I think. Sometime around there. Alright, go ahead and uh, set this up. Custom do not want animation shop. Okay, we do not want any of that, and we are ready to go. Paint Shop Pro is ready to go. Next is a very, very cool little program. Have you ever um, installed or tried to run a computer game um, when your computer is set to a higher resolution and a, low, and a higher color depth, but the game is wanting a lower resolution and lower color depth, like 640 by 480 at 256 colors? Well, with this program called QRes, this will um, um, change those settings uh, um, automatically for you when you double-click the shortcut for the game, or, or program for that matter. That way you don't have to manually uh, change your color depth and resolution every time you want to play a certain game. It just does it for you automatically. So this is definitely a good thing to have. Works on both 95 and 98 and I'm sure Emmy as well. And again, do not want to restart just yet. Next is a web browser that is very, very handy on an older computer like this called Retrozilla. It's uh, a Mozilla-based uh, web browser, but for older computer systems like this. I still wouldn't recommend uh, doing daily web browsing on a computer like this, but this does give it the ability if you do need to go to a website or two. So I'll go ahead and install this. Okay, as soon as you install it, it, go ahead, it goes ahead and opens the program. And I do want that as the default browser, but yep, here's what uh, Retrozilla looks like. As a matter of fact, just to prove that internet works on this computer. Here's Google. Next thing to install is VLC Player. This is version 0.8.6. I believe this is the last official version for Windows 98. You can run newer versions of VLC on Windows 98 using kernel X like I mentioned before, but it's very, very, very sketchy and glitchy. So I just recommend using the version intended for Windows 98.
I believe this one dates from like uh, 2005, 2006 or so. It's a very, very old version of VLC. All right, that's VLC installed. And what's next? Is there anything left to install from the server? Well, yes, there is. Uh, Windows Media Player 9. I always like having this on uh, Windows 98. This is the version that came with uh, Service Pack 1 in Windows XP, I want to say. This is the version of um, Windows Media Player I used until 10 came along. Media Player 10, not Windows 10. Um. <laughs> Installing CD burning support, even though this computer doesn't have a CD burner. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, configure these settings. Yeah, we'll add a shortcut to the desktop. How about that? And of course, it wants to default to opening in the media guide, which is not going to work on this computer because the uh, media guide um, is no longer accessible these days. So we'll go ahead and uh, tell it not to start in Media Guide next time we open it. And for I'm going to make some adjustments to file types. Um, I do not want it playing music CDs. Do not want it playing WAV files. And I do not want it playing MIDI files. For those three types of files, I do not. I, I just prefer to have older um, software play those. It's just more nostalgic for me. Okay, I went on ahead and um, restarted off camera just because I felt like it was time to do that. And I believe it's finalizing some stuff for Damien Tools, which we installed earlier. And here's our uh, prompt for IntelliPoint. Yep, that's the mouse we have. And Kernel X is confirming that it is ready to go if we need it. So let's uh, go back to the server. One more thing I want to install, this is a Win Image 7.0. This is good for making disk images from a floppy disk. I rarely use it on a computer like this, but it is nice to have. And I believe that does it for everything that's on the server. So we can finally uh, move on to other things. Now, I have the hard drive in this computer, uh, much like other uh, vintage computers I have, partitioned into two uh, sections, one for the OS um, and another for uh, files and uh, um, data for games and ISO images. And this is where we're going to install a few more things. This is I keep a lot of my commonly used um, computer games on this partition, including um, some Sierra games, including Mixed Up Mother Goose, which we'll go ahead and install. As you know, this is the first computer game I ever played. And MIDI works just fine. On an old computer, you've got to have at least one Sierra online game. <laughs> That's just my opinion. Alright, Mother Goose installed successfully. And now for 3D Ultra Pinball, my favorite pinball game of all time. Your system is correctly configured for playing WAV files. Yes, we heard that voice. Uh, these uh, Sierra installation prompts are just uh, etched right into my head. <laughs> Okay, it's not going to be able to test the CD drive because we don't have a CD in the drive. And this happens a lot of times when you try to install uh, Sierra games on newer, faster systems like this. Um, on like Pentium 2 and newer, you'll get this very annoying integer divide by zero error, and the setup uh, fails. And when you try to open it again, nothing happens. And so the only way to fix it is to... Uh, restart the computer which is very very annoying okay I've restarted and as you can see it 
um, comes right back up. Now, to avoid the problem we just had, we want to tell it no to performing the uh, test on our system. So, uh, yeah, that way we can just avoid that integer to five by zero error. Okay, I want a large install. And there we go. Doesn't take long at all. And no, I don't want to register. And there we go, 3D Ultra Pinball is ready to go, um, despite our little uh, hiccup a while ago. Next, we have um, the Gus games, which include Gus Goes the Kooky Carnival, Gus Goes to Cybertown, and Gus Goes to Cyberopolis. These are three games that I played a lot as a kid, and I always got to have it on an old system ready to go. Okay, do not want QuickTime 2 because we got QuickTime 5 on here. Alright, successfully installed. And next we'll put in uh, Cyberopolis. Installs roughly the same way. Again, no quick time. Alright, successfully installed. And next, Cybertown. The um, irony about this is that this is the last uh, Gus game I'm installing, but it was actually the first uh, ever Gus game that was released. <laughs> but oh well. In fact, it wants to install a much older version of QuickTime, which we definitely don't need. Don't need to restart yet, at least. All right, let's. That's all the Gus games installed. Now on to uh, let's see. Oh yes, the Packard Bell bundle games. Um, these are the games that came bundled on uh, Packard Bell systems in 1995-1996, including the Kid Story games with uh, Millie Fitzwillie's Mouse Catcher and the Pirate Who Wouldn't Wash. There's no law saying I can't install this on a non-Packard Bell system that I know of. <laughs> Alright, congratulations, setup has completed. And next, the old standby, My First Encyclopedia. Now this game will, will refuse to install if you're set to a uh, a uh, color depth higher than uh, 256 color, so we'll go ahead and lower that. In fact, we'll lower the resolution while we're at it. No real reason to do that, but might as well. Oh, and this also includes Spider-Man Cartoon Maker. You normally don't see this screen on a Packard Bell because it's already installed on a Packard Bell when you first get it. <laughs> of course, this is from Knowledge Adventure. And this is Spider-Man Cartoon Maker being installed. Alright, that's installed, so we can go ahead and put our uh, screen back to normal. There we go, much better. Okay, now, the next games that I need to install are actually ISO images, which I have in this folder right here. Now, we're not going to install all of these, but we'll install most of them. And since we've got Damien Tools installed, all we have to do is right-click one of these. No, actually, no. It's been a while since I've done this. I actually have to uh, load these in via Damien Tools. So we'll go here. Mount image, we'll go um, to this uh, D partition, and we'll load them from here. Do you want to And this is a big job. I, uh, growing up, had a huge obsession with construction equipment, especially when I was about six years old, seven years old. And so, uh, games like these, um, I just loved. <laughs> 
and this was put out by the, Dis the Discovery Channel actually and we do not want quick time we already have a much more uh, uh, superior version installed that one just close out of that so we'll go back to Damien Tools and mount another ISO to install next we'll install a, a game called Croc which is uh, featured quite a bit on the Flying Scotsman's channel I never played this as a kid. Um, I didn't know about it until uh, Blind Scotsman told me about it a few years ago. <laughs> but it is a pretty fun game. I haven't really played much of it, to be honest with you. It's just a good old-fashioned 3D platformer. I think it was also uh, really popular on the PlayStation, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I currently don't have a joystick connected to this computer. I probably will at some point, but so just for now we'll go with keyboard. But we can always uh, change that later. Okay, do not need to install DirectX 7 because we have a newer, superior version on here already. And there we go, that's uh, Croc ready to go. And next we'll install the sequel to Croc, um, very cleverly named Croc 2. <laughs> So the setup process for this is pretty much the same thing. Nothing too exciting here, although it was a lot quicker, I must admit, than Croc 1. Thank you for visiting the Nostalgia Mall. If you liked what you saw, please like, subscribe, and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can also support me on Patreon if you would like. The link to all of these are down below. Until next time, this is Billy Core signing off.